Alright, after you get the box mounted, I always put my anchor right here about where the bottom of this box is. You just make a pretty good consistent loop right there. I go up about halfway in this box. So I, I pretty much put it right in there where I can zip tie it and this little little uh, ground lug looking deal here that's where I'm going to tie my strength members in so about right in here or between here and here is where I'm going to cut it in so I'm going to take this right here and score it let me show you how to do that alright I'm going to take that where my finger was I'm just going to score around here and you'll see why that's important in a second and then I'm going to start right there and what I do so if it's flat right here I'm not going to sh shave off right here I'm going to kind of go at an angle on the top so I pull it make sure I get into my little scoring spot and then I'm just going to start pulling and all I need I'm going to pull out about 5 foot or so depending on how well it starts stripping for me. And uh, the trick is to hold the side where your knife is, like perfectly still or as still as you can make it, and then pull with your other hand. That way, your knife stays the same the whole time. Um, after I get about maybe a little more than an arm's length stripped back, Then I'm gonna snip it off so you just kind of see I've stripped it all the way back to right there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut into it so it's wrapped it all the way out to the end. You take your knife, you got one side like that, you just pop the other side so it's the same on both sides. And then just like pop the end of it, get it started. And then pretty much just gonna split everything on the inside and the outside jacket. And then once you get up to here, that's why we scored it all the way around. And it just popped right off. You don't have to score it really hard. Especially if it's cold like it is today. Everything breaks easy, easier and faster in the cold. And then, whenever I get to there, I'm going to cut off. I know that I only have about three inches or so inside that, so I know that that's going to be plenty. And I can shave it off in a minute. So then... Now, what I'm doing is we got this little uh, spot where we can <clears throat> tie down our fiber. And uh, it's going to be harder to do this with one hand, so I'm going to just show you about what everything's going to look like and then I'll bring you back. But um, <clears throat> so I'm going to zip tie that, loosen that lug up, and slide everything through the there right there. There we go. Got everything all finished up, zip tied, tied down in there. And uh, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this and just loop it around inside of this box. There's definitely better boxes out there than this one. Uh, what I like to do is give me some extra room, especially when it's cold outside, because may break it a few times so now that I get plenty of slack in there what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw me a zip tie let me show you what I got now so now I've rolled it around there a few times what I like doing is kind of putting zip ties in there just to kind of keep everything back in there um, but I'll also put a zip tie like right around in here somewhere and then score it 
right there so my fiber will kind of run around um, let me sh show you what that looks like so I'm gonna grab it right here and uh, if you can see uh, I got a you know about three foot extra so this is about where I grabbed it you could use fiber strippers but I think the safest way to do it is just barely score it all I'm doing is just touching the blade on there I'm not digging in or sawing and then you just snap it and then pull it apart it is pretty hard but right now you'll find out if you if you dug into it too much now I mean I'm not real good on weight but I bet it as cold as it is right now it probably took 40 pounds of pulling just to get it off alright then you get Ready to go, and then I'm gonna zip tie it down here. All right, I'm hoping my camera will stay still for this. So this is a little pigtail. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do with this is take my uh, fiber strippers and you can see that there's three different little holes, and we'll use all three of them on this one right here. But I do, everyone's a little different depending on what kind of box you're installing. I always come back, you know, at least around six inches, put it in the big one, just pull it off, get rid of the little, little hairs right here, just Teflon hairs. And you have to have like wire cutters to get rid of that. <clears throat> you could use scissors, but he'll kind of tear them up. So then, the most important part of this whole entire job is remembering to put this little heat shrink tube over top of this. If you don't put that on there, then you end up having to re-splice it. Which is fine, because I've done it about a million times. <laughs> and I'm sure anyone else that's spliced has forgotten it at least a few times. So now, what I'm going to do... I'm going to strip this off right here. And this one will be my second one. So I'm going to give myself, you know, about an inch and a quarter or so. That's really going to be hard to see. That's where it gets small, but it gets even smaller. So now I'm going to go to the third. And it, I don't know if you can or not but whenever I'm stripping I always bring my cutters in over here instead of over here because just by touching it right there you can score it enough to where it'll snap off so I'm gonna put it right there and that's it and I bet it seems like it's real easy on camera but it takes quite a while to get used to doing that so now I'm gonna take this this will be my little shoe. I'll slide it in here. And shut the door. I got a little fiber cleaver. I always just take an extra wipe to kind of get dust off. I'm sure if you're in a factory or somewhere in a perfect con dust free conditions it won't be so bad but out here in the real world everything's a little different so now I'm going to take this slide it in right here to show you what it looks like so now this is the little 900 micron side so now this is the side with the uh, two count fiber for the standard size drop now, let me work on that. A lot of them are different. Uh, I've seen one count. The two counts seems to be the most common. So you want to kind of split it up. And it'll make sense to you once you look at it. Because there'll be two different colors. Blue is always the primary. So, 
kind of going to do the same thing that I did with the other one, except for I'm not going to go through so many different steps. This one is just going to be the very bottom hole. And what I do, when I'm staring at this, I always put the logo towards me. Depending on how you use your cutters or how you get used to them, that seems to be a pretty important role on how you strip your fiber back because changing sides will change how it feels and getting used to the one thing is the key on getting faster at doing all this. So then you clean your fiber. You always clean it before you do anything else with it. <clears throat> so I'm going to stick it in here. Slide this back. Pretty much the same thing I did with the other one. I just don't know if y'all seen that. So I always pull it. I just leave a little bit hanging out there. That's what I do in the cold. It's going to be really hard to see. But if you can't tell, I got just a little bit of that blue shielding hanging out. I don't know if you can see it or not. So, let's stick it in the cleaver. Let me show you how I did this. Take it, these little, little magnets will line it up. So I just kind of make sure it's all real snug down in there. And then, close the lid. Pull the trigger. And there we go. Now we're ready for this side right here. And this little hole right here is, goes, goes to right there. I don't know if you can see that hole and this hole lining up. It's really hard being like left handed. But everything should just kind of fall right into place. And after that, just turn it on, shut the door, and hit play. Usually don't take that long. <coughs> That's it. That's how you do a perfect splice. Now I don't know how I'm gonna show you how to do this. So what I'm gonna do just do it and then show you what I did. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do that little heat shrink that I put on earlier. I'm gonna open up all my doors and grab this. Slide it down to as close to the center as I can. And then I'm just going to drop it right down in this tray. I'll show you where I put it. So, this is where I put it. That thing right there is a little heater. And it'll start to heat it up. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like after everything gets all heated up. Alright, and on this box, this is how I tighten up everything. You can see, there's no spot in this whole box to put your heat shrink. I don't think it's made for uh, splicing fiber, but it does have a bulkhead. That's why this utility uses it. So, this is how I attach my heat shrink in there, which is just as good as any other really i mean i've seen some where the heat shrink sticks out way out here and then it's in the way so i mean at least it's back here on the back of the box but i take a little piece of felt or some kind of really sticky tape and uh just stick the heat shrink back there so we have the black coming in here and it's broken out tied here and zip tied there and the buffer tube kind of rolls around till it gets to about right there and then it gets broken out and then the two count fibers will roll around into this right here. The orange just kind of keeps going and stops right in here. I don't know if you can see that. But then it rolls into the heat shrink and into a little jumper. Rolls around, plugs into right there. <clears throat> and the whole reason for doing this 
<clears throat> is to uh, give us some kind of a testing point outside the house. So if there's an outage or something and your or a transformer catches on fire and uh, blows up and melts a bunch of fiber and you're sitting there and you have to re-splice or someone has to re-splice all of these other houses back together to make sure that they're not missing anything they can come out here and test you know all the houses on the street that are supposed to have light and that's pretty much it and the other guy he'll come in here and run his line however he's got to run it and bring it up over here and kind of run it around and then plug it in to the other side of the little bulkhead and that's it for the house side I was going to record what I do over here at the pole but I don't have any way to hold my phone so I might try to find like a test nap or something like that and post that later but it's kind of the same thing uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll get up there and I'll kind of show you what I have to do up there um, I just don't know how much I can show you uh, until I get up there